Hi guys, OB Dave here. And I am I'm into dolphin stuff now. <laughs> Trust me all you like. I thought you were wing ding. They're still mammals, so, you know. You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals, so let's do it like they do on the Discovery Channel. Blowhole stuff. <laughs> 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 Uh, right. <laughs> I'm Ash, by the way, if, if you're new here. Welcome to Dave's channel. I uh, was supposed to only feature occasionally, but now I'm here all the time because I like to annoy him. Especially uh, with well, my own made-up theme tune. And also I have more fun when you're doing reactions with me. Aww. And also, you know, I'm allowing you to move into my house because you do reactions Allowing. With me. Allow it. It's not true. Ash is moving in. I couldn't be more excited. Uh, right. We're going to do a military reaction. <clears throat> and okay. I spoke to your dad last time I saw him about yes. this channel, Binkov's Battlegrounds, because your dad watches a lot of the military channels, but also a lot of the Ukraine military channels that are updating on the conflict out there and the particular battles and well, things. Well, yeah, one of his closest friends is Ukrainian over here in the UK. He, he like plays tennis with her and stuff, and they're really close, and they talk quite a bit about it. So he's, he's mm. been very heavily involved. I mean, my dad also absolutely adores like military um, technology and, and obviously like knowing how things are going. Yeah, it's, it's answered a lot of questions. I know we're going to digress here a little bit. But over the years, like me and my bro used to debate in the pub what the future of war looks like because once we've had too many beers and we've grown up around guns and stuff like that, you, you tend to get onto things like that. Yeah. And I said to him, wars will always be fought with boots on the ground. It will always yeah. be like that. And he was like, no, nowadays it'll be drones on drones and blah, blah, blah. Look at what's happening in the Ukraine. It's trench warfare. It is. Fighting for like 100 yards of space. Pretty much. With drones dropping bombs on you. It's terrifying when you watch the footage it of it. It is absolutely terrifying. It's like that one where you see like a dad was showing me where there's an armoured vehicle coming along and I see they've got the, I think it's one of the guys in the back's like chest cam and this drone comes over the top and then just comes straight through the guy's open window and just yeah. pops in the yeah. middle of the actual vehicle. That is terrifying. Is, yeah. How do you get away from that? What, what do you, you do when you just... I, I saw one where a guy was hiding behind a blown up tank, a Russian guy, and they were flying a drone bomb towards him and he sees it and he tries to run around the tank and essentially oh. a, a flying bomb is chasing him around the tank while he's Jesus. running for his life and then it, it gets him and pop. Yeah, it's awful. It's horrible to watch. Uh, I've stopped watching all that stuff. The I used brutalities to watch it on, of war. I used to watch it on Twitter quite a lot. There's pages that just yeah. do all the updates. Of, yeah, great. my dad says he doesn't enjoy obviously all the the deaths and things like that, but he enjoys just the discussions and obviously the tactics and how they're moving and yeah, like how well each side is doing, and then obviously the different technologies that are being used and things because it is really fascinating. Well, this one has the potential to be controversial. I've watched it at the office blokes ages ago. Okay, could the U.S. military conquer the U.K. if it wanted to? Now, this is back in 2019. Wow. And bear in mind, the most funded military in the world. I don't think they're the biggest military in terms of personnel, but they are the... Are you my, sure? I, yeah, I think... In terms of landmass and population? No, but not that. I mean, men and women, numbers. I think that China may have more bodies. I suppose they do national service I think and India things. might have as well. Yeah. I've, I've, we've reacted to videos that talk about all this and break down stat by stat and country by country. Okay. Obviously, our military is small and getting smaller at the moment. Yes, we've got uh, more reserve than we have standing permanent members of yeah. the military, which but is a shame. This is just a fun thought. Because the military thought. does so much. It's just a fun thought exercise, though. Okay. Because in my opinion, us being a little island full of uh, ferocious alcoholics, it's not as easy as just taking over. But... The government have taken most of the guns away as well, so... And the over the, the history, US has bailed us out a couple of times. Yeah. So, who knows? When we stood alone to fight fascism, <laughs> it was nice for people to join in eventually. Eventually. I'm joking. That's why I'm saying this has got the potential to be controversial. I get that. We love our American allies. We do. And European allies. We do. Uh, so, are we going to check it out? Yes. Could the US military conquer the UK if it wanted to? Interesting. Be nice in the comments. We may make some jokes at some point. Who knows? We all know US and UK are close allies, and that US armed might is far greater than that of UK. But just for argument's sake, and to learn what sort of limitations waging warfare across the ocean implies, this video will explore US invading the United Kingdom. So, with just the airplanes and ships left to count on, is an invasion over the Atlantic viable? Hmm. 
Добро пожаловать в штаб квартире Бинков. Welcome to Binkov's HQ. You know, not many managed to invade Britain. Ones that did were the Vikings. And if you like Vikings, War of Clans might be wanted to. Some rules will apply. US gets no overseas bases, and all other countries are impassable. Distance from US to UK mainland is pretty big, especially when reaching London. Before trying to land any troops, the seas must first be clear of British ships, and Royal Air Force must be suppressed. US has a massive advantage when it comes to naval assets. Basically, all of its assets are made for oceans and could operate near UK, if needed. While the Americans would need to sail to and from Britain, taking weeks away from their actual presence, US Navy could pretty much do whatever it pleases near the UK. It's interesting to point out that most of US ships do not carry anti-ship missiles. US Navy prefers to use their carriers for such missions. British Royal Navy is to go down a similar route. Their harpoon missiles are old and set to be retired soon. Not all ships have them. Only a minor part of the British fleet has modern air defense systems. Basically, the sea war would be fought above the sea and under it, but the British lacked anti-ship missiles for its aircraft. Furthermore, British Tornado aircraft ceased to train for the anti-ship missions almost two decades ago. Basically, if UK had to try and do air raids against US fleet, it would be down to two weapons, laser-guided bombs and short-range tactical missiles. Brimstone in particular might be the weapon of choice. While its warhead is tiny, Brimstone 2 has a decent range. Still, against dozens of potent destroyers designed to deal with many anti-ship missiles at once, it's unlikely UK could do much. British best bet would be their submarines. They're fairly modern. Theoretically, the <coughs> British could use their ballistic missile subs as attack subs as well, and speed up the entry into service of another astute sub, while keeping one Trafalgar running a bit longer, rummaging for retired. Look at that difference in. Huge. I know this is 2019, so things are going to yeah, change. Yeah, things a bit, have but changed, but. It's 11 <laughs> versus 68. I know. But again, the most funded military in the world. And uh, ours, they're just making cuts constantly, aren't they? They keep retiring things and not having new things to bring yeah. in. And Which is sad because the military isn't just for defence. <laughs> in the possible, obviously, event of a, 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 another war. It's there to obviously do humanitarian um, support yeah. and obviously medical research and things like that. Even things like when uh, the fire service were on strike, we brought in the military to, to be firemen, essentially. Didn't well, we? it's like the uh, military were warned that the possible they, they would go into martial law. So it's like practicing it when, you know, the Manchester riots and London riots yeah. happened as yeah. well. They were there when the floods were happening. They were there through the Ebola outbreak. You know, one thing that's not factored in with things like this is what? we actually have a lot more armed police in the UK than people give us credit for. It's true, because I was surprised when you told me, because I was yeah, like, I, I thought it was only a what, section of it. I can't them. remember what the number is now, but it's a hell of a lot more than you think. Yeah. It's not on and all of the tactical aid vans that drive around have firearms in them. And... They're essentially, they would be like a paramilitary. So, mm. you know, maybe you're talking another, I don't know, let's say there's like 50, 60,000 armed police or something. Yeah. So that then they would be the home guard and then they could be training civilians yeah. and things like that. So the ability, when you're defending, the ability to flex up and get the general population in versus a, a military yeah. you know, coming towards you. Like, so let's say our military is 200,000 people. It would be four hundred thousand people within three weeks. Yeah, because month, people so. would sign up, or you know, to defend their land. And yeah. you know, the British are very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Defensive of their country. I'm, I'm thinking of another word, but anyway, patriotic. It's, no, it's another word I'm thinking of, but it's gone. It's fine. Um, I mean, patriotic is, is definitely a big part of the British culture. We are, we all band together. But this is interesting because it's obviously it's just talking about completely cut away the rest of the world. It's not yeah. talking about who started what, who triggered what, yeah. and who would be on each other's sides. Because obviously if America was just deciding we've had enough of the Brits and went in, the rest of the world would be up in arms. It'd be like, excuse me, what are you doing? Who do you think you are? But it'd be the same if the British were like, we're sick of the Yanks, you know, we're, we're going to change the whole situation. Again, the, the rest of the world would be like, who do you think you are? 
So it, that, I think, would tip the balance as well. I know this is just an isolated, just if there was nobody else on the planet, it's just two countries, obviously, battling it out. There's, there's an interview with uh, Xi Jinping, you know, the Chinese, whatever he is, prime minister or, yeah. or supreme leader or you yeah, know, whatever Yeah, I know, he is. yeah. I don't know their um, politics, so... Well, someone asks him about Britain and, uh, you know, are you trying to be a military threat or are you trying to take the mantle from Britain and all this sort of stuff? And he essentially turned around and went, who are Britain? What are they going to do? And it was like, it was such a, a diss when you watch it. Mm. But it's like, it's kind of right in the sense that the Chinese military is humongous. Yeah. And they're training kids how to use mortars and things like that. It's like they are preparing and they've got one and a half billion people. But again, if he's like, he's targeting one country. Obviously. Yeah, I know. It's Whereas a- the rest of the world to be like, who do you think you are? Well, and also we forget that the US has one of the widest range of like military bases on the planet. They are situated everywhere. There's a video we watched ages ago that was uh, all of the known US military bases around the world. Yeah, they are everywhere. There was a point where my actually my heart rate I started to go up and it's like, God, if they decided to take over the world, I I don't know what would happen because they... We'd be by the side going, go Yeah, sure. (laughs) It's it's mental to think about it though. Like the situation we are in at the moment and what's been happening as well it's a little bit unnerving isn't it i actually find it very comforting because like this thing where we just bombed the houthis and in yemen and it was us in america that did it yeah. as a joint operation but supported by Austra- australia and canada and a few other countries um if that escalated into a war because it's iran allegedly backing up yemen then wouldn't you want to be on the side of the people that have bases all around Ag- the world? Agreed, yeah. but I also don't want it to lead us into another world war, which unfortunately it feels like that's where we're heading with the Russia, Ukraine, the Palestinian. It, it feels like that. It, it does feel does like feel that. Like I know that we've we've not really had like absolute peace on this planet at any one time. There's always will. been something going on. But it would be nice if we could just stop. <laughs> We've actually lived through the past few decades the um, safest sort of time in terms of yes. the, uh, in terms of wars and I conflicts. Think we and talked. Stuff. To, we watched. Yeah, it's like about less that. people have died as a result of war in the last few decades yeah. in, in history. But then the number of deaths is actually more than any of the wars because of all the other stuff going on, like famine, disease, trafficking. But, that, but that's always gone on in conjunction with the wars, hasn't it? True. We debate this sort of stuff when we're not oh, even I know, it's so weird. We have some weird conversations. Heard <laughs> sailors to crew it. Still, the British would be far outnumbered. US submarine fleet dwarfs theirs. Given a bit less time on station and British home advantage when it comes to resupply, the balance of power may not be quite 6 to 1. Still, it's no question the British subs would get hunted down within months. Aerial anti-submarine platforms would also play a large role. And while the British could use all their assets, even just the deployable portion of US assets would be enough to force the British subs into hiding. Furthermore, US carrier-based air power would make it hard for British anti-sub helicopters to operate. The main force projection would be done by US carriers, naturally. US could choose whether to use more carriers initially and then have less available later on, or to maintain a smaller number on constant patrol. To defeat the British Air Force, the former is more likely. US nominally has 11 carriers, but only 9 air wings. It does have an additional support wing, which is a lot bigger. It may be the source of one or two more combat wings, after some months of preparation. But crews aren't the only issue. Lifespan of a carrier necessarily involves lengthy maintenance periods. Important to note is that the deployable period doesn't mean the carrier can actually be on a mission the whole time. Usually one or two deployments are made during those 18 months. Missions are usually 6 to 8 months long and several months are needed to prep the carrier and its wing for another mission. Shorter missions might give more deployments in the short term, but in the long term they would require even more maintenance for every month spent out at sea. Because of all that, it's unrealistic US would send out more than 6 carriers at once, after a few months of prep time. Similar issues would affect the aviation assault ships. Perhaps 4 to 6 could be deployed at once, after some preparations. 
Grand total of combat planes US Navy and Marine Corps could muster in a few months long air campaign is thus smaller than the total number of US planes. US might fly in fresh planes to replace ones that got lost. Flying them over the ocean to a carrier would be doable. What could the British respond with? Royal Air Force is smaller than even the readily available US planes deployed on carriers. Another huge issue for the British could be their lack of air defenses. Everything they currently have are fairly low altitude systems, meaning the US would be free That's to the bomb puppet. them from high up with guys. What's with the puppet? That's Benkov. For something so serious and like fact based, it's <laughs> a little weird. Does it work? It's just That's what weird. it looks it's like in real life. No, it doesn't. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Yeah. UK would also suffer the US cruise missile barrage. While the Brits have some such missiles of their own, it's unlikely they would be used against the faraway US bases. Even the subs that could carry them would be better utilized for defense of the homeland. While not all could be launched at once, US could sustain the effort. The British Air Force would be mostly paralyzed on the ground. US has also a much bigger recon platform fleet, especially when it comes to satellites. British lag those, as in the real world they timeshare some US spy satellites. US aircraft would be looking for targets as well. Britain would have no real means of scouting the US bases. US AWACS type planes would be plentiful while British ones would mostly be trapped on the ground, with runways and highways being mostly inoperative. Thus the Royal Air Force would slowly get destroyed on the ground. When they would be able to get some planes airborne, they still may not choose to engage the Americans, as it's likely US attack waves would be made of close to 100 planes with possibly as many fighters as Britain would muster per each local interception, or more. The best Britain could hope for would be a roughly equal kill ratio in the air. And when the losses on the ground are included, over months of a protracted bombing campaign, US would still be left with a sizable force. All this didn't even include the US Air Force. While the scenario requires it to use the bases inside the US, Britain could be reached. At first bombers would be deploying cruise missiles, but later on they would be likely used for bombing missions. But could the Air Force tactic? I think that top one hit Manchester then. I know, <laughs> like, I was going to say. It was right there, wasn't it? Was it was literally right there. Yeah. It's a, it's a scary concept, but it I think because really... we share so much culture, so much heritage, things like that, it's not just unlikely. It's just, it's never going to happen. I, I weird, really it? hope so. I, I agree with you, but you just don't know what the future holds, do you? You can never predict anything. It'd be a weird turn of events for it us would to become be. enemies one day. It I would can't be. see any. No political conflicts or anything that could actually lead to that no but then see what happened with Brexit yeah but we've still got a close relationship with the whole of Europe regardless mm, of not Brexit. completely it's caused quite a few problems and a couple of the countries have just become a little bit frustrated and been withholding things and making it more difficult for British think, because of the decision that we made I think because it was so mishandled yeah. it's it's other countries are looking at it going, I'm not sure it's right, right for us, but right-wing parties that are more nationalist are on the rise across the whole of Europe and a lot of them are saying we need to stop being a part of the EU and a lot of them are getting in power. Oh, wow. Because it's like, why are we getting being told what to do by people in Brussels when we are proud, like, insert country yeah. name here. I get you. I get it. And also the migrant crisis that's going on at the moment. There's people like, how dare you tell me to open my borders to, uh, you know, potentially millions of people. When and you're yeah, transfer your funds when we've got our Brussels. locals struggling already yeah. and we've got areas that are, you know, very high in poverty. And yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I get that. The, there's other Like countries. I said, even though I never voted during Brexit. I voted against it, actually. I I didn't because I didn't feel I had the right to as an African and I was just like I've not even though I've been in this country this long I don't have a history or an understanding of what and I didn't really understand what Most was going to happen. Most people voted on one policy and it was like we're going to save the NHS with 350 million pounds a week. Yeah. Never happened. Uh, no. It was just all lies. It Most, was. If it could be done again and it was transparency about what it actually means everyone would vote against it. Probably. Not everyone, but like it, it would get shut down. Yeah. Yeah. 
tactical plane fleet help out as well? With very ample in-flight refueling, the answer is yes. US operates the world's biggest air tanker fleet. The Hercules-based tankers, however, are too small and would use most of the fuel just to get near Britain. Still, the remainder of the fleet has a substantial fuel offload capacity and tankers could refuel each other. Such ops may sound complex, but compared to what the British did in Falklands War, they're fairly basic. The British used a dozen tankers to refuel themselves repeatedly, keeping the bomber refueled throughout all of the route. While all of the Pretty tanker clever, fleet would not be available due to maintenance, the rest could still offload significant fuel loads just outside Britain if needed. With several refuelings per plane, US Air Force could still expect to have around 400 combat planes in action practically every day. The British would really have no chance in the air. Within months, the US would have complete control of the air. And thus the second phase of the invasion might commence. By that time, British ships would be mostly dead, even if they hugged the shores and just aided in the air defenses. British submarines might hold out a bit longer, if not being used to actively hunt down US ships. But even if British subs managed to kill two US vessels for each of their own, final result would be the end of the Royal Navy. So at around six months or so into the war, the landings would be mostly unopposed, except for the Royal Army defending the shores. Six months would be enough for the US to assemble pretty much all of their active and reserve assets. In addition to landing ships, US could count on numerous cargo assets of its Sealift Command and Reserve Fleet in case a port is secured. US Airborne could also help, with the numbers shown probably growing with newly trained paratroopers. Getting additional heavier equipment for them, however, would not be likely, given the time limit. US transport plane fleet is pretty big and should be able to drop all the airborne troops within days. US could be looking at close to 30,000 troops during the first day and close to 20,000 more the day after. Subsequent days would see fewer and fewer troops being added and more and more supplies being brought in. The British would enjoy more soldiers than shown before. The reserve mentioned covers only the soldiers receiving some training periodically and soldiers for whom some heavy equipment is stored. In an event of a total war, Britain would be using those six months to mobilize as many soldiers as possible. While they would be equipped with basically just rifles, and while their training would be less than adequate, they would still boost the overall numbers several times. Yet all those soldiers may not be enough, as UK has a problem of geography. Its landmass is just too large. Its coastline is very long, even when taking just the western part of its coastline into account, the area to be defended is huge. And what about the islands? Perfect for US to take and entrench themselves at, before launching further landings from them. Most of those areas are sufficiently far away from the mainland that British artillery would not be much of a factor. Is That's it, interesting. <clears throat> is it Jersey that was occupied by the Nazis in the Second World War? It might have been Jersey. I'm not familiar with that history. I feel actually. like it was, and it's literally there. Was well, it not the, the Canaries? The, no, the Canaries are Tenerife and stuff like that. That's, oh, right. But you know, around the British Isles, I'm pretty sure it was Jersey, and they fully occupied it, had bases on oh, it. Oh, wow. And people from Jersey class themselves as British, most of them. Yeah. I mean, they, they are, they're English people. Yeah. Really. That's interesting. I'm sure it was Jersey. But yeah, that's interesting that we'd flex up from, I think it was 137,000 troops that up many. to like over a million. Yeah. But minimal training, probably outdated equipment. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, if you're going up against some highly trained guys with good equipment and you've just been given loads of old... We're, we're quite big arms suppliers, actually. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't say we would be short on equipment. I really mm. don't. But his the interesting comment he made about the geography of England, they're not taking into account like how many ships have gone down in history around the UK because of the type of waters. Do you think that's it's also the cliffs or? around... Ah, I absolutely it's, do. It'd be, you'd think it'd be well, so how do you, by how do you like? Well, it is. But they still got defences that exist there. Yeah, from... I suppose if you're a, a destroyer that's fleeing the RAF, not the RAF, or even the RAF, maybe. Well, he's saying at this point the RAF is dead. So yeah. it's just the ground troops and obviously, you know, like um, artillery and stuff like that. But it's 
it's there's still loads of issues with like the way that England is and the, with the cliffs, you know, and the beaches, and it would be really difficult to get your boat ashore and get people ashore. Absolutely, yeah. So his, I, I, but I'm, we don't. Have, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that sort of we can't perspective. Just, yeah, I think what he's talking about is there's that much surface area as far as like places they could land. Yeah, and we've got minimal artillery that's actually probably in the country. That you're not going to be yeah. able to protect all the beaches everywhere. Yeah, but that's active uh, artillery pieces. That's not the artillery that's been stored, ready to be sold to another client or anything. Like we supply quite a lot of armored vehicles and artillery to yeah. Australia. And and we, we've got like uh, BAE here that makes yeah. the fighter jets. Yeah, I think, and someone maybe let me know on this because I could be wrong. I think Accuracy International that make they make sniper rifles and yeah. stuff. I think they're a British company. I think they But are. I've seen things that say they're not. Interesting. Um, Maybe they've been bought out. Maybe they started out British and they were bought I, out. I watched a documentary ages ago where they were trying to develop a, a sniper rifle for really low temperatures that's not going to jam. Yeah. And um, I watched a whole documentary about just this one sniper rifle that's being made by him. And it, it said that they were being made in Britain. But then, I don't you know, things get bought and sold constantly. All the time. Like, who knows? Because we, even if we owned that company it could be mm. that they're being made in turkey and being shipped over because turkey make a lot of arms nowadays they make a lot of the shotguns and they stuff. they do yeah yeah I, d- I think we could flex up flex up sorry and manufacture again because <coughs> we did it once before it's yes. just a lot of the skills have been lost and it'd be like all hands on deck factories 24 and then it's, it's also like weapon. saying like the, the the u.s ability for surveillance is way more supreme than the uk oh, yeah. surveillance yeah. i mean there's still <clears throat> i know that the us is slowly leaving that area but it's a, a place called Men- menworth hill and they had obviously surveillance domes based oh, out yeah. there yeah and you've seen them i've told you about yeah. them i think they've probably just become obsolete because they've got these satellite, no, they've got these satellites I think they've done the job that was the thing they've cut they've, they've done what they were intending to do finish the work and now they're heading home or something but the surveillance never stops but i think it's been replaced by the amount of satellites they've got that can just look anywhere on earth literally so yeah it's i mean it's never going to happen in a million years with friends at the yeah. end of the day and a, a lot of people's heritage is the British Isles that yeah. are over in the States and stuff and we're, we're, we're cousins at the end of the day aren't we yeah when you look at like the number of immigration like in terms of countries to the US a big population from the or big portion of that is British yeah so there's um, I saw a thing the other day where they're giving Irish passports to people whose great grandparents are Irish interesting like so the cut off point is great grandparent or grandparent or parent it's got to be you know below that you can't say my great 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 grandpappy was from Ireland yeah um, but the reason a lot of English people are applying for them is because it gets you an EU passport again and then you get free travel ah, to the rest of Europe yeah so it's like a sort of a backdoor into Irish citizenship aren't you part Irish? my great granddad my dad's dad's dad Northern Irish so oh. it doesn't count because no, that's count. part of Britain. Yeah, it's part of Britain. So like, I got excited when I saw it and I was like, you know, I, I, I've obviously got that blood in me. Uh, and then I was like, we're literally uh, travellers from Northern Ireland. Like, you know, literally caravan folk with horses and stuff. Yeah, so. no. My, my history is Normandy, obviously, a couple of places in Britain and Africa. <laughs> I, I was going to do the genealogy. We got sponsored at the office blokes by a company that was going to do I it would, for us. I've wanted to do that forever. They, they were literally, they were going to not only pay us to do it, but to send all the mm. kits for free, process it all for free. But then we got the two strikes on the channel. Uh, and we had to turn around and say to them, I don't think we can do it because we're just, you know, we're not posting regular. No. So it's, it's on my list of things to do. Oh, sorry. <sighs> and what about Northern Ireland? There are just too many places for US to concentrate its assault on. Mm. The British would not be able to move their forces around easily and protect those islands or the Northern Ireland. Mm. So the islands would fall one by one. Then either Northern Ireland would be taken or part of Great Britain would fall. Hard to traverse overland Scotland would be an obvious choice. Though that would also slow down US breakthrough as well later on. Cornwall or Devon are also decent picks as British defenders lack room to swoop down on the US beachhead from all directions, though such areas would likely be more heavily populated by British military to begin with. 
once the US manages to secure ports and airfields and brings in US Army reinforcements, it would be basically game over for the British. US would build up its helicopter force on the areas it has taken, which is considerable. While the British have a fleet of their own to help quickly distribute its forces where needed, their numbers are small. Both sides would of course be losing many helicopters, US to British low-level air defenses and British to US fighter cover, which would continuously be flying over the important areas. The British would have only a small part of shown inventory of heavy weapons present at any one point the US attacks. While US would also not be disembarking thousands of its Abrams tanks or 10,000 of other heavy combat vehicles, the overwhelming fire support coming from various directions would more than make up for it. Fire support from the ships may come in form of MLR units firing from the ships rather than actual gun barrage. US ships still lack long-range gun rounds. Attack helicopters are another way of concentrating force in one area quickly. But again, the British are far outmatched, even if just half of US numbers are present. The issue for the Americans would be time. As the scenario asks what can be achieved within one year, US would be under pressure to progress from their multiple beachheads. Northern Ireland is likely to fall within the one-year time limit, but only minor parts of the Great Britain would be overrun by the Americans during the same time period. The British would put up a hell of a fight. Ground troop loss ratio would favor the British somewhat, but when Air Force and Navy losses are added in, where Britain would suffer more heavily, the US would come out fine. With added large chunks of conquered territory, the US could call itself a victor. Big thanks goes to all my patrons on... It's an interesting thought It is an in though, really interesting thought experiment. It's like that um, Man in the High Castle, isn't it? Like, what if uh, yeah, it I was hated you? That. I know you I did, but I terrible. didn't. I uh, a great really concept. Good. Yeah, great and concept. And then as soon as they introduced other dimensions and time travel and stuff, I was like, fuck off. Yeah, but you're not really into the sci-fi kind of stuff. It shouldn't be sci-fi. It's just, what if the Nazis won the Second World War? What an interesting amazing concept that you can delve into and then it became Alvida's own pet where he's like got a girlfriend in two different timelines don't get me started on that it was dog shit it, to you absolute dog to shit you. Why, is it, why is it not really still on I really enjoyed it they did two seasons didn't they and then cancelled it I think it. it was longer actually it should be cancelled it was longer than not. two seasons and no just because you <laughs> don't, don't like don't sci-fi don't get me started I won't that. get you started it's, but it's we not just sci-fi have different, it, it's just a shit plot twist in a fucking... Don't, no, let's talk about something else quickly. It was a really get hot interesting then. I'm getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had a go at me last night for like getting heated go about the science thing. No, we were six and a half minutes into an introduction before we even... <laughs> yeah, but were you were six about... and a half minutes into the introduction before. Not right, you. <laughs> we... I really enjoyed that. Obviously, like this is right up mine and Dave's street. Seriously, we we have so many Genuinely conversations. Talk about Honestly, this all the time, don't we? we absolutely love these kind of things. So it's like, what if? And then you know, like factoring in all sorts of different things. It's like that, like having that conversation, saying, mm, well, I don't know how I feel about you know the ge- ge- geographics of it. And then before they talked about obviously the number of troops, even Dave was like, it's it's definitely you know the British are very good at you know re- re- um, recruiting and obviously yeah. training and getting people out. And then it was the discussion of like when they, he's saying there'd be less ammunition and, you know, availability to equipment. It's like, well, actually, we're pretty big arms dealers. We'd probably have quite a lot in store that we would just cancel contracts I, and go, we require these. I don't know if we manufacture ammunition. That's something I'd have to very look at. I question. don't think that we do. Maybe the military do for themselves. Or but maybe they've got the, contracts, but I don't think we manufacture ammunition. I know, ammunition. but we have, like, a, we have a lot of gun uh, clubs in this country that do manufacture their own yeah, uh, for yeah, their patrons. They, most of them reload. They don't manufacture. Yeah, so but they, that's they still... They take the spent cartridge yeah. and just put on you... And um, also, the number of people in this country that actually own weapons is bigger than what a lot of people do think. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, so I, it's like the... Um, I'll, I'll, let me Google it. You know, like Dunkirk, where the, the, the civilians got involved heavily. I want to say... That's the other side of the British as we would. I like, want to say three million tenacious. legally. That was the word tenacious. I was looking for. I want to say it's three million legally owned firearms in the UK. I feel like it's like that. that. It's something like that. Obviously, not talking about the illegal ones. <laughs> yeah, well, there's probably twice as many of them. How many legal guns in the UK? In the UK. 
Statistics on firearm and shotgun certificates there, the gov.uk. Estimated number of guns That's per Wikipedia, capita. That's Wikipedia, though. Uh, I mean, you don't know when this was updated, let's either. Let's scroll right down. <laughs> no, go back to the gov.uk, because it was actually... I don't think they're going to give out that there. sort of... Statistics on firearms and shotgun certificates, England. And it's up to March 2021. Yeah, but that doesn't tell you how many guns there are. So firearm c- uh, certificates on, on issue, 156,000, 548,000 shotgun certificates and 565,929 people held a firearm or shot uh, or a shotgun certificate. Yeah, so some people are going to have the combined firearms yeah. and shotgun certificate. That's why it's less. Yeah. So either way, you but we also don't know million. how many people, how many, how many guns can you hold per certificate? It it doesn't it because there is a limit. Because your dad was talking about when his friend was trying to give up some of his weapons, he didn't have he, the, the you, allowance for wh- that many, so he you couldn't get, take his. When you get your gun. license, you get an allocation. Yes. So with shotguns, not so much. If you've got the cabinet space for them, it's mm. pretty much okay. Nice. But it, it can get silly, you know, if you've got too many, they can ask questions. Well, yeah. A firearm certificate, they'll say, you're allowed to own two forty fours, one fifty cal, and three twenty twos yeah. or something. And then you fill that, and if you want to get rid of something, then you've got to swap it. Or you've got an apply for a change on your license which where is, you're going to swap a 22 for a 223. Which or, is what I remember. It's just what is that setting? We'll have to ask your dad because he was the one that made got, me think about it. Because when he said that, like I said, his mate was giving up yeah. shooting and he couldn't take the weapons because he, it was a limit on his certificate. Allegedly, he may or may not have about 16 firearms in his house. I, I, yeah, he said something like that, but he's not sure. But it's within his certification. He, knew, he knows exactly. We're just purposely a vague when we talk about these things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you think most people with a shotgun certificate have got, most of them are going to have at least two shotguns. Yeah. Probably more, like probably four or five. Yeah. And then most people with a firearm certificate, even if they just collect 22s or whatever, they've probably got a few. So yeah. I think there's like three million, maybe four million yeah. domestically owned firearms, which... Then you factor in the police, how many they've got. Yep, and um, then our military. There's also under like Houses of Parliament, huge military stores for loads, like yeah. there's obviously all the armory like museums. I know you wouldn't want to use anything like Flint that. Lock musket. Against you never a, know. Hey, if needs must, if needs must, you <laughs> don't know. Guys got night vision on and stuff coming for you. And you're so, like, <laughs> hey, look, come on, look at the guy who got the purple heart. He went up against how many people on his own? Oh, the yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't remember his name. The Marine. Yeah, that, uh, he, Silver Star or something. He thought he was dead heart. and then he spat in the face of a doctor. Yeah. To show that he was alive. Yeah, yeah. it was amazing. It's, but you so, you so you just never know. And then it's like... It'd be horrible. It would it'd be It'd be horrific. really, really grim. It would um, be awful. There'd be so many losses. And would we have to stop watching Friends in protest? Would we have to stop re-watching Friends? And just be like... There's no, a lot of American like, yeah, influence just, here in the UK. We but, have... We watch, I, we I watch don't think Friends most up. of the time, though, so it'd be... a uh, Sorry, Chandler and Monica, but um, he, you're out until the war's over. I don't think that would be the case. No you're one would it. disarm you, like, disown you or anything like that, because there's a lot of American influence over here. Oh, yeah, absolutely, and there always will be. That's yeah. why this sort of thing would never happen in a million years. No. But as a thought experiment, because we are quite arrogant as a nation... The Brits. We are. It's true. We are, but it then a true. tiny little island conquered half the world at one point. Of course we're arrogant <laughs> and we're riding on the coattails of the people who did all that centuries ago. In a very horrific way. Yeah, I mean, the world was horrific at these times. Everyone was doing it to each other. And just because we did well at it at some point doesn't mean we're any worse than anyone else that was doing it. I'm not <laughs> an apologist for no, all that sort uh, of no, stuff. No, a debate to be had on another day. But yeah, yes. but uh, we think, no, no one can do that. And I think, as a population, would fight to the last because it would be. Oh yeah. Yeah, you you know you're not going to win. As I said, we're a very tenacious culture. Tenacious is a good very word. Very tenacious yeah. culture. But then there's a lot of people, even in the states, I think that are so young people that are so they've got it so easy and they're so lazy. Yeah. That it's like I'm not fighting some 
war for, no. for him. And we certainly, as, as if it was the other way around and Britain tried to invade America, that would never happen because the number of Americans that have <laughs> way more guns personal, like There's civilians. There's more guns than people. Well, it's like even Demo, like obviously Matt Carricker from Demo Ranch, yeah. he's, he bought a new gun store, which is like a, like a storage unit underground that he right. built under his like um, garage. It He's got like, what, two Desert Eagles, I think a, a 50 cal BMG. Mm. Oh my God, he's, he's got, got loads, hasn't he? It's just, it's crazy. It's unreal. I like it as a thought experiment and he yeah. does similar thought experiments with like, could um, the US invade Europe and, you know, could the, the US and China in a war and things like that. So there's a lot of interesting yeah. sort of things there. It is, it's really interesting. Obviously a little bit out of date because it was based off four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're we're tough bastards, but we're not that tough. No. <laughs> like we, we want. Yeah. But then, how do you? How obviously the Americans have won. Now they're in charge. It's going to be very quick and easy to assimilate and to for everything to go back to normal because we share so much culture. It's not like we've been invaded by China and suddenly we're having to learn to speak Mandarin. Well, at the end of it, not a lot would have changed. You don't really know that. I'll, I'll obviously. I'll, I think our politics and uh, you know so the way we do politi- politics um, the queen uh, well obviously our queen has passed obviously I mean our king and it's terrible of me um, that would change as well if I was king Charles I think Charles. the lords and ladies situation would change I think a lot of like very historic British culture would not be accepted I by don't American know why culture, you'd... modern culture but I think the royal family is more popular in America than it is in the UK I mean I don't know because I've I've heard a lot of like hate for the 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 monarch in Britain, but I it's not as much as you think. No, I think I we are think all it, very patriotic towards our royal family. I think, I think royal most family. people are indifferent towards the royal family in the UK. Some, some the are indifferent. Of are like, no, I think I there's care. a minority of the indifference and a minority of you know like hate. And the rest. Oh, come on. Look at all the royal weddings. Look at the coronation. How many people and all the statistics of how many people switch over to yeah. watch it. People that line the streets in London all the way up to Buckingham Palace. It. It's not. <laughs> day off work just because someone's get some toffs getting married. So it... It's not just some toff. They're all toffs. Anyway. Uh, anyway, we're going to run even longer if we're not careful. With and also, I'm, and I'm a big royalist and Dave isn't, so... I'm not... I'm neither royalist nor anti-royalist. I'm one of those that fits into that. I quite like the fact that we have a royal family that's iconic around the world. It's British tradition. I don't know why all these, like, Just Stop Oil gimps, like, they protested the royals recently for something. And it's like, have you heard of the Queen's Canopy where she's trying to rewild a band around the whole world across mm. all the Commonwealth countries? With forests mm. and trees. Mm. No, none of them talk about that. What no, are you doing? Not. Gluing myself to a fucking no, road. I know. Anyway. But anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, cheers for that one, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe as always. Let us know your thoughts down in the uh, comment section. Obviously, it'd never happen. We're all no. friends. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, we hope we'll to go soon. visit America soon, too. Yes, but that's a discussion for another day. Yeah. But yes, we will be at some point heading out to the States. But we'll yeah. keep you updated on that. Definitely. I want to do like all the man versus food challenges. Oh, don't try to lose weight. Anyway, <laughs> right, cheers for that one, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys.